Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Telescope Man. Well, the last few weeks, really, I've been just posting up some live videos uh, during the hurricane and also did some live videos of the good old boys net. I uh, don't know if you like those or not. A lot of dead air in them, you know, because it's an actual radio net or a hurricane net. So you're listening to dead air a lot. Sorry about that, but uh, wanted to give you a kind of a taste of uh, emergency communications and, uh, you know, what is actually going on. Anyway, today I wanted to cover a subject uh, <clears throat> that I've covered before, kind of in passing, <coughs> but I really didn't get into much uh, detail. <coughs> I know if you looked at my toolbox video, man, I got a notice on the computer, what do you know? You notice this little, uh, I call it a little tackle box, that's what it is. Uh, just a little uh, tackle box. You usually put lures in it. But I keep various small parts that I might need in a case like this. So uh, anyway, I wanted to show you some of those small parts I keep. So without further ado, uh, let me show you the first ones. Of course, I've got a little soldering station. You can't see it. It's up under here. You can see it in my main uh, picture of the shack. Uh, setting back over here in the corner. It looks kind of bluish. Anyway, a little spot on the desk where I can do a little soldering. And in this toolbox or tackle box or whatever you want to call it, I keep some extra tips for the... Uh, soldering station, some extra tips, different sizes. Uh, usually I keep the largest size uh, attached to the tip itself. Let me show you that. I think I can show you that right there. Which seems to work real well for some minor soldering that I do here around the shack. So anyway, in that box I've got some extra tips for the soldering station, just in case I need them, they're right here and I can get to them uh, just in a second. One of the other special connections I keep in there is a right angle connection uh, for my with a BNC on both ends. Uh, I've got some radio equipment that has BNC connectors on it. And this is a little adapter you can buy uh, that makes it right angle. Sometimes it helps to keep some of the cabling uh, more neatly arranged if you use something like this. So I've got an extra one of these in the box in case I need it. Uh, right angle BNC connector. Uh, also in there, and I didn't mention this, and I think somebody made a comment in the video, I also keep a selection of fuses uh, in the little case in case I blow a fuse in one of the radios. I've got a replacement fuse that I can get to in just a second. So I do keep fuses in there. Probably one of the most important adapters that I keep in there is this uh, little adapter here that lets you attach two pieces of coax together to get a longer piece. Uh, it has two SO239 connectors on each end and of course the PL259 screws on and all of a sudden, you can lengthen the coax uh, if you need to. So I keep, I actually keep four or five of these on hand. I use them a lot when we go portable. Now, I've heard people say, well, boy, that's no good. You know, it's going to cause you problems. No, it never has caused any problems whatsoever. I've uh, even... Uh, fellow that I knew had a spectrum analyzer 
and we tested these and you could see the tiny little bump in change in impedance but it was so very minor that it's really not note noteworthy to even talk about it. It did cause a little tiny change, but of no significance uh, out there in the real world. So I use these a lot when we go portable. So I got probably got four or five of these uh, in the little uh, tackle box. Of course, I've got a uh, BNC to PL259 connector adapter. Okay, so I can have a BNC connection that I need to get a regular piece of PL259 connector onto. And this is the little adapter that does that. BNC to, I guess you would call it an SO239 because that's what's on this end, but uh, they might call it BNC to PL259. I don't, I don't remember, but uh, that's what it looks like. And then, of course, since I've got a Collins radio back there, uh, Collins used the regular, regular RCA jacks in the back of the radio. So I have uh, several RCA to PL. 259. I'm going to call this a PL259 because that's what most, this is actually again an SO239. It's the uh, connector part that fits on, uh, that the PL259 fits onto. But anyway, uh, this lets me, uh, lets me use a uh, regular coax with a PL259 connector on it on my Collins station back here and I can just plug it into the RCA jack. So these are real handy if you happen to have Collins equipment or if your radio happens to have RCA jacks on it. All right, let me kind of organize these a little bit. One of the parts, and boy, it's going to be hard to show you. I'll try to get a little shot of it there in the camera if you can see it right there. This is a lightning arrestor replacement for my Alpha Delta lightning arrestor that's on the coax uh, outside of the window here. And uh, I keep a couple of these around. They're the replacement plug. Uh, there's a little screw on thing on the top of the lightning arrestor. You just unscrew it, take out the old one, and put in another one, and you're ready to go again. So uh, <clears throat> I keep some of these. The lightning arrestor, I haven't replaced the uh, plug in it. Uh, it's been working fine. Uh, it can take several uh, nearby hits before it fails, but sooner or later uh, it's going to take a hit where it fails. And I've got this around so I can get back on the air uh, in just a few minutes, if need be. And uh, more adapters. Uh, here's a little BMC again to PL259, SO239. Uh, BNC to coax connector and again I have a radio uh, namely this flex radio that uses BNC connectors in the back of it and I've got to somehow connect regular coax with a PL259 to it so I have a couple of these kind of adapters around in case that should fail or break they have a little tiny pin, as you know, if you know what a uh, BNC connector is, it's got a little fragile pin on the inside, which is prone to breaking if you put any uh, torque on it. And I have actually had one of these break on that Collins radio. Uh, all of a sudden, I couldn't transmit. I looked around, checked the tubes, 
couldn't find anything. Got a, another guy over here that's familiar with Collins Radio. He looked around a while, couldn't see anything wrong. Couldn't find anything burned out. Guess what it was? This pin had broken off inside the back of that unit. And we got a pair of tweezers and pulled it out. And it was fine. <laughs> so if you're using a BNC, let me just tell you, the first thing you should check if your radio fails is the BNC connector itself. Look in there and see if the little pin is still there. If it's not, it's probably stuck in the back of the radio, and that's why you're having problems. Uh, you know, the obvious things first, is it plugged in? <laughs> we didn't check the obvious thing first. We looked at everything else and couldn't find anything and found this last, the little uh, pin broken off. So anyway, I keep one of those around. Of course, I keep plenty of PL259 connectors around. And uh, I always try to uh, buy good quality uh, connectors. Amphenol uh, is probably the best. Uh, that refers to this little disc in the middle. This is a Teflon one, but uh, the Amphenol, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, uh, is probably a little better quality less prone to melting, but as some of you know, I don't solder these. I solder the end connector, yes, but I don't solder the shield. I simply compression fit it uh, by screwing it down onto the coax and trimming the braid a certain way uh, to get a 360 degree ground connection. So. I don't solder these uh, the typical way that most hams do, uh, so I'm not as worried about melting the Teflon or melting the foam insulation in there as most people are. But I do solder the center connector. But normally you don't have to apply uh, too much heat to do that, and, and this uh, Teflon will be fine. So I haven't really ever had a problem with that. So I do have a, probably five or six of these laying around. Uh, and uh, anytime coax goes bad, this is the first thing I look for is being bad. And then, of course, uh, if you've got a handy talkie, you know, you might have a BNC connector on the handy talkie, or you might have an SMA connector uh, that you want to try to get into a piece of coax. And I have some coax with BNC connectors on them because they're a buddy pole that comes with BNC connectors. They give you a length of coax with a BNC connector on it. So in that case, I have an adapter that can go from uh, SMA, which is the connector used on those little handy talkies back there, over to a BNC. And I have a couple of these just in case I ever need to connect that radio up back there, uh, those little handy talkies, directly to some coax. I do have a I don't have it out right now, it's behind here, I didn't want to dig it out. But I have a way to just pull the coax off of my rig uh, that's going to my uh, 2 meter, 70 centimeter vertical outside. And I have a way of connecting that with a little adapter uh, that I can connect up that handy talkie to the outside antenna a big one that's uh, up on top of the shed behind the house. I also have that connected. Anyway, with that said, uh, the one that I find is most important are these two, which is a PL259 connector, and these barrel connectors where you can lengthen your coax. These are kind of important. Uh, <clears throat> actually had to use one when we were uh, running the coax to the tower 
I needed another 10 feet and uh, used one of these uh, to get that extra 10 feet. So uh, then I waterproofed it properly, etc. I have never had a problem with it. So these are very handy to have. I would say go online and buy three or four of them. And uh, go again, as I've said, go out there and get you one of these. And then you can organize all these little parts. Uh, you never know when you're going to need one. And if you have to go rifling through a junk drawer full of other junk, uh, you're going to get frustrated trying to find the connector. Let me kind of put them all in my hand. You'll see what I'm talking about. The connector you might need for that particular uh, connection. So with that said, I hope this helped you a little bit. Uh, organize up your connectors. Go out there and get a few for the type of radio that you're running. Uh, make sure you have a backup in case that connector should fail. And then organize them in a little box like this. Put it somewhere where you can find it and you'll be in great shape uh, for any kind of repair that might be needed on any of this equipment. Anyway, with that said, as I usually do, I wish you clear skies of 73 and remember to keep looking up to see the greatest show on earth right over your head. Yeah, it's up there right now, but you can't see it. Every single night, y'all be good. Keep looking at the videos and subscribe. Everybody uh, have a great day.